Well, in 1996, you dropped Season Veteran. Right. You signed a Def Jam. Yep. And were you the, the first West Coast artist? Warren was. Warren G. Warren, ah, Warren yeah. was there. And Warren G. had basically saved the company at yeah, that point. Four million. Did yeah. Four million out the <laughs> gate. <laughs> yeah, but you were one of the first. Right. And only. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely West from Coast. The exactly. You know, uh, Def Jam West uh, artist. And right. I remember uh, I bought that album. Right. And, and just as a side note, I remember, look, you know, just looking at album cover and you had the Rolex on right. with the black face. And I was like, yo, one day I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have money to buy <laughs> one, one of these, man. Right. And I'm wearing mine right now hey, just, I just got for that reason. Too. Yeah, I you got one, one too. too. And you know what's crazy? Rolexes have always been a staple in East Oakland yeah. street hustle. Like the presidential was the thing to have. That was the epitome. Yeah. If you got once the you get to the yeah, yeah you got the day just as cool. Yeah. But once you get the president, you're, you got, you're that's you big dog stuff. You've arrived. You have arrived. Yeah. yeah. For it's sure. Like these days, I have it, and, and you know, I have three and yeah, exactly. Gold, yellow gold, white gold, and uh, you know, uh, rose gold. Well, you know what's crazy? Even like these days with the watch game, how everybody is doing the APs and all the these different watches. Yeah. It always comes back to the rose. The rose. This is this is the watch. I don't care what you say. This one right here is the, the watch. watch. All them other watches, I get it. This is the watch. Yeah. Period. Exactly. Exactly. Straight up. So that album came out. Right. And um, Let's Ride was the was the single. Yeah. And I remember that that just made such a big splash. I remember just riding around, listening to that with my friends. That the Bay was, it was that that Bay oh, Area yeah. was on fire when that Let's Ride it. Because yeah. Def Jam did me right. Like they, I had the big billboards. You know, the box was out then. I was number one on the box. Mm -hmm. And you know, yeah. you remember that the video channel, the box. Of course, where you pay to get yeah, your you video paid, get your videos yeah. played. I was number one on the box, and it was just like the hometown kid that made good with Def Jam. It was just it was. They had them off on on lit. Yeah, Russell Simmons was in the music video. Yeah, and a lot of people to this day, it's like, how? I mean, I, I heard even turn down videos with a lot of artists from Def Jam, and they was like, how did he, you get into being in a video? I just asked him. Like, me and Russell, had a, mm. from day one, we was cool as shit. Lior, too. Shout out Russell and Lior. They taught me a lot of shit, and they kept it solid with me from begin from before the deal to after, when the shit was over with. But I just asked him. I was like, Russell, I got to. Well, Russell was, let me cut back. Russell was into a song I had called Real Pimp. He was like, this is my, shit. like he, that was his record off that album. And I was blown away like, damn, Russell was into the Real Pimp. All right, so I just figured I was gonna ask him to be in the video. He was like, what you need me to do? I said, I'm gonna pull up on the Harley. I just need you in the limo. You don't have to be out. You could just be in the limo with the windows up. The limo pull up, I'm gonna pull up on the Harley. You just roll down the window, hand me the manila envelope. It's just letting it, you giving me the keys to this shit and I'm gone. He said, hell yeah, let's do it. And he did it. Yeah. Uh, T-Boz is also on the album. Yeah. Jermaine Dupri, I guess, did the did the beat. Yeah. Uh, but mostly, you know, it was Local, a Bay album. Yeah, 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 exactly. E-40's we, on it. You know, Dwayne Wiggins is on it. Looney's is on it. Right. I had a bunch of local production. We, yeah. we, went, we went out and got a couple records because Def Jam was suggesting that, you know, you spend some of this budget on some. So Jermaine... Bust us across our head for a big old piece of my budget. Shout out to Jermaine <laughs> Dupree. <laughs> yeah, Jermaine yeah, wasn't cheap back then. Hey, no, yeah. Jermaine cracked me a top to cross, top to cross of my head, man. You feel me? Yeah, but uh, How it was that... good. I had a good time to recording that record. That was a fun record to record. Jermaine, a, a good dude. And that was your first like major. Yeah, yeah, that album. was my first. Yeah, exactly. Everything had been independent prior to that. How did the album do? Album did well, actually. Um, back then. You know, people was like, well, they didn't promote you as good as they could. You know, I think the record made it to about 400,000. Mm, right know, below gold. Yeah, right. right below gold. You know, and then they sell you, the next one's going to be the one, the next one's going to be the one. But uh, for me, like on a sophomore debut, being just from East Oakland, I mean, the record did well because what it did is it, it gave me national, a uh, national platform. And from there, you know, I thought it was going to be all peasy, but it didn't go like that. Well, because uh, Def Jam merged with Polygram. Right. And so, you got kind of lost in the shuffle. Well, what happened? Let me tell you what happened with that. That's why I said Russell and Lior kept it funky with me. So when I, came, when I signed to Def Jam, I had on a presidential. 
And Russ was like, "Okay, I see you." It wasn't this one. It was the goal. This was this. Was the, it was the smaller one, you know, when the head was a little bit smaller, the thirty six. So Russell knew what I was about. Uh, I told I told him and Leo. I just kept it straight. I said, "Dude, I'm, I'm hustle. I mean, if if we can get some money together, let's do it. But I'm not interested in getting famous. I want to make some money, you know, blah blah blah." So what happened was the sophomore album. We had already started recording it. I had a decent budget and the record was done. They called me into the office one day. I was in New York. Leo and Russell called me into the office and they're like, Rich, we're bringing you in here because we're doing a merger with somebody. And this, this, this guy, Edgar, Edgar Bronfman or whatever, is, but from Seagram's and Sons is, is somehow in this polygram twist and they're going to purchase the label and we don't know who's going to be running it. And I said, what you mean? You guys selling Def Jam? Like, to me, I was like, how the fuck do you sell Def Jam? But they was like, no, basically this happens all the time. We're doing a merger, blah, blah, blah. This is Leo explained it to me. So they said, the reason we're calling you in here is because you got the option to stay. Your record is done. You slated to drop uh, this year. They said, but we don't know who's going to be running the label, meaning Tina may not be here. Julie may not be here. I may not be here. Russ may not be here. So we don't want you to get stuck somewhere and you know, you'd be in a, a, a bad situation. So what we're offering is you can stay or you can go. If you want to leave, we will give you the record that you just recorded and we'll give you a hundred grand, right? So my manager is sitting here. And so I look over to him and he's like, we'll talk, we'll think about it. And it was like, yeah, that's all we ask. I mean, just, we just want you to be happy. So boom, I went and sat up, talked it over with my manager. He's like, they just gave you the record that they was about to drop and they want to give you a hundred grand. It's your deal anywhere. I was like, all right. Coming off a, a nearly gold record. Right, exactly. So I'm like, it, let's do it. And at the time, like I said, the first budget for the, what you call them, record, I peeled 40 grand off of that first budget. That was all I was able to muscle out of there. And uh, I was like, it. we got an album. And that's the album that I ended up putting out independently called The Game. and. Russell, they sold the label, and this is what I heard. Lior told me this later on, that the guy said, "We want to. I want to buy the label, but I want to bring in all new people, right? And but I want to keep you, Lior, here. But I'm, you get rid of all your people. I bring in more people." And Lior was like, "No way! Like the people, these people, we got here together. So if if they go, I go. You feel me?" And he said that the Edgar Brothman then was like, well, that's such a stand-up gesture. We're going to buy it and let y'all continue to run it. Now, if I could have seen around corners, I'd have stayed there because I loved with Def Jam. You feel me? But I just thought that selling it means I'm going to get shelved. I'm going to be sitting somewhere stuck, signed. And I had that earlier bruise from the Jed situation with the contract, and I was tied up and couldn't do shit. So I thought I was making the right move. So no other label, no other major? Picked up that project? No, I ended up putting it out independent. Well, why, why not go with another major if you already have an album recorded? And well, well, get, my get all that public, you know, well, my, all that marketing and everything. Well, else my manager that. claimed that that was going to be the play, and he was seeking some shit out. And apparently, while he was seeking some shit out, I was seeking some shit out. And I, I, time started passing. I slowly drifted right back off into the street. I was like, "Fuck it, I put it out independently. It's already recorded." I put it out through Walter City Hall, got a big ass check, mm. took the hundred they gave me, put all of that down on a house, and I just moved forward. I went, I'm gonna tell you, I've always had a, and you probably never knew this, I've always had like a love hate relationship with the music shit. Mm. Because I, it, no matter how much music I put out, it just never seems to get me to where I felt like I should be, right? Now, some of that could be, me not putting enough music out, me not leaving the streets alone enough. Like I got a one foot here, one foot here. So independently, we was getting so much money. And back then, Vlad, you gotta understand, like, I never thought rap could do the shit that it did for Jay-Z. Like that kind of money. You know, it was just like, we got I got a house, I got some whips, I got cop money, I could go real. I'm, yeah. I'm straight. And this is a real <laughs> Bay Area. <laughs> mentality yeah like, I, without naming any names i don't know how many rappers that everyone knows about i'd be hanging out with All and right. then, like someone would knock on the door and then they'd pull out the garbage bag full of weed and serve serve this dude 
<laughs> Bro. And then, and then hey. we just get right back to hanging out again. Yeah. Like, like I mean, and it's so with music, I always kind of felt like, plus, I'll be honest with you, I never liked airplanes. Def Jam used to have me flying all over the place. I mean, Vlad, it'd be days I wake up, I wouldn't even know where I was going. I'm just on planes, planes, planes. And then they had me doing hella work, promo tour. I hated promo tour. I was like, so it's no money? They was like, no, you have to do this to promote. I'm like, but I'm running around doing all this shit and there's no money? Like, and they was like, no, you do this to promote the album. It was just a lot of shit that didn't sit well with me. And I never wanted the fame, Vlad. I just wanted the money. Like if I could put out records and shoot videos and do shows and not have to be famous, but you can't do that. One comes with the other. And yeah. that's, that's the thing that kind of pushed me out of music is a lot of shit that I saw behind the scenes was, was, was goofball shit. A lot of the hoops I saw people jump through to be on was goofball shit. And me just being a town, I just couldn't see myself doing all that. Even if I knew it was Jay-Z money there. Now, in hindsight, I'm like, you know, I could have said a lot of my homeboys straight though. And I could have put my family in an even better position. Now, we ain't in a bad position. But when I look back at how much money cats have gotten out of the music industry, I was tripping. I was tripping because I was talented enough to to get popping. Yeah, you know, I agree. You were one of the distinct voices out of the bay. Right. When you heard Richie Rich, you knew who you were listening to. Right. You do not sound like anyone else. Right. You had your own cadence, your own flow, your own distinctive voice. Uh, but yeah. I mean, after uh, Let's Ride, right? it doesn't seem like you had songs that reached that level. Yeah, no, once once I got, once Def Jam had me plugged in. And yeah. to go back to independent from there, it's just, you don't get the visibility. And I wasn't really conducting my independent business on the level that I could have been, because you've seen like, we got a lot of who was independent who conducted it on a level to where they were still eating, but I was busy. Yeah. I was one foot over here, one foot over here, like, 